So why is this watch a fail in my eyes? So I'm going to go into detail about that later on, but we can start with the stats and specs, and then we're going to get into detail about exactly why this watch is a fail. Now, before we get into detail about its uh, pros and cons, mostly cons, here's the stats and specs. So guys, stats and specs. Let's start with what I paid for this watch. £122. Yes, you heard me. I paid, <laughs> I paid £122 all in delivered from Pagani Design on AliExpress. Shipped them in the UK. It took uh, two weeks. £122. These are shooting up in price. So this is 159 grams. I've taken three links out. They are push pins in this. Uh, they came out okay. They're a little bit tricky. They're a bit jammed in there. It's a bit fiddly thing to do. And the lug to lug on this watch is actually great for a watch with these kind of end links. Because you've got the female end link and it actually conforms a bit, 50.7. Anything close to 50 is spot on. Ideally, slightly under 50 would be ideal. But for this design of watch, that's great. The case is a 40 from sort of that edge there to there, which is again a good size, but it weighs a little bit bigger because of this chunky design. Crown is 6.4. It's a push-pull crown, not screwed down. But it's a nice good 6.4 size, which is easy for screwing. Um, hand winding I mean, uh, you've got your pull out for the date adjust and then one more for the alignment of the hands, let's check that, so let's go to the 9 o'clock, mm, not perfect, the dial is a good 30mm size, nice and big and clear, but if I wanted to swap this out for something with better loom, we'll get on to that, uh, I can't because it's not that easy to find a 30mm size dial, which I like the look of, that I could swap into this, but I do like the dial anyway in this, but I don't like the loom. But talking of loom, here's a, a shot of it in, in action, if you will. It's, it's dreadful. It really is. It's dead after about three to four minutes. It's woeful, unfortunately. Um, paying over £100 for Pagani, I would expect them to have made the upgrades that I expect at this price point. We have a butterfly clasp, all milled, very nice. It's decent enough quality, and we have the etching on there, Pagani design, very smart. And it actually fits me okay. It's not too loose, not too tight. Fits my seven inch wrist acceptably. So that is a good start for actually fitting me. Moving inside this is an NH35. It's running okay. Um, getting about plus nine, plus 10 a day on average. I've tested it in four different static positions and I've worn it for a few days and I've overall gauged a plus 10 a day, which is it's okay. And a very small beat error, which again is with intolerances, I would say. So that's all right. 100 meters water resist, which is acceptable uh, for a push-pull crown, definitely. Screw down exhibition case back. Has a bit of the information on the back there. That's mineral crystal on the front is sapphire. Everything is stainless steel. All brushed with a little bit of polishing on these edges here. So that's it, specs, specs and specs. Stats and specs, everything's covered. So let's go into more detail. That's the bit you really need to know why I like this watch but mostly why I don't like it. That's the key thing you're gonna find out. So let's get stuck into that. Now, I appreciate you guys really value my opinion because before you buy a watch, obviously you're, all you're relying on is what it says on the website and, and looking at reviews. And that's where we come in. And I'm gonna get straight into, I've written notes here, so make sure I'm thorough, I don't miss anything out. Let's start with the good things because this watch isn't a total fail. I'm not just gonna, I'm not here to just have fun and poo-poo it and say it's utter crap and just try and get hits on the channel. You failed. I'm being genuine here. There's there's reasons why you get disappointed with a watch, which I will get into. So start with the good. It's all brushed uh, with a tiny bit of polish. I do like an all brush finish. It gives it a more toolish aesthetic and, and, and it stops it looking too blingy. And that's something that I think with the watch of this design could easily have problems with. If it was all polished as well, it would, it would be unusually blinding. It would be far too bling. Uh, the size, they got it spot on. 40 mil, I think works really well for this design of watch. But ideally a 38 would have been incredible. I think they can get away with it still, but I know from experience what people have said uh, for the markets in China and other parts of Asia, people really like a larger watch. Anything less than 40, they deem a woman's watch. If they want to appease European tastes, they could get round the loophole, if you will, or their concerns by saying, we have a man's version and a woman's version. If you're a man, you can acceptably buy a 38 mil watch and not feel like your masculinity has been destroyed. Movement is great to have an NH35. 
and it's running okay in this watch. The dial, I like this waffle design. Obviously they haven't used a 100 year old rosing machine for doing this incredible waffling pattern where they transfer it from a large plate down to this intricate little design. No, it's been laser etched from a machine in China. Crown, good size. It would have been nice if it was screwed down, but ultimately it doesn't matter. It's not that kind of watch. 100 meters is still acceptable. It's good for having a splash about in the pool and things like that. It's a good holiday watch this if you want to have something that's a bit more fancy, a bit more bling and a weekend watch as well. And the applied logo, it's nice instead of it just all being printed on the dial. It's good to have a, a little applied little symbol shield on there, which is great. And it fits well. It actually fits me really well. Seven inch wrist. Uh, it took three links out. So you've got a bit more scope to go down a bit and you can, I wouldn't say much more than seven and a half to eight inches. Anyone with a bigger wrist, this watch is not going to fit you. But now we have the joy of me rolling out all the reasons why this watch is a fail in my eyes. Unfortunately, the list is quite long. And here's, here's an idea, it's all in reverse. I'm using my selfie camera, let's put it that way. That's the good. And all of this is the bad. So here's why. Why would you not buy this watch? And why, it, in my eyes, is a fail? Let's start with, it's a hair puller. This bracelet, although attractive and fits my wrist comfortably, immediately i've obviously got bear like arms for some reason uh because i felt like it was constantly tugging and plucking my hairs i'll end up with a bald patch on my wrist not great not comfortable brushing is rough especially on the case sides it looks like someone's been at it with an angle grinder i'm exaggerating but you get my point not great the this is the this for me is the deal breaker as someone who has an eye for detail and appreciates design this is a fail. This is the main reason why I just couldn't, I can't unsee this. The first uh, link after the case is, is two millimeters too wide compared to the case that it's supposed to be conforming to. You'll see here pictures popping up and things like that. It's just not aligning. And when the first link is just starting to conform around your wrist, it actually exaggerates that sort of trapezoidal design sticking out and it just looks wrong it doesn't conform they could have reduced it down two mil to actually fit and align with the design of the case which is meant to as it's a integrated bracelet which is upside down by the way in this watch i know i can flip it around but that's annoying anyway uh, th these round screws that go around the bezel they first of all i think they could have done a better job by actually making them the octagonal shape like they have done on the caddison which we'll get onto the the fact that they're round, first of all, is lazy. It's cost cutting. They could have done what Caddison did. They managed to successfully get that integrated design of those unusual looking screws. These, although the slots in the screws all uniformly go around, which is good, because if they got them all higgledy piggledy, that would have done my head in and that would have been another fail. But the screws are sticking in and out at different heights, different parts of the bezel, sloppy. Date window is white, should have been black especially if you go for the black waffle design. As you know me, I love a blue dial. Don't worry, no silly pop-ups this time. I do love a blue dial, but if you have the black one, how nice would it have been to have the black date wheel as well? If you don't like this bracelet, you're stuck with it. You, there's no other option for one that's uh, one that you can swap out that has that little nick in it to, to integrate into the, to the case design that, that isn't available. The main thing that bugs me as well is 122 pounds. For th about 30 pounds less, you can buy a Caddison. They do a 42 mil, although bigger, I think is still gonna be acceptable for the average man. It wears really well. You're getting more for your money. It comes with Sapphire now. It used to come with uh, Hardlex, which we know is not great. If you want Sapphire on your budget watch, you can still have that now on your Caddison. The fact that you get more for your money, everything is better finished. I found that more comfortable. The loom was slightly better, but that's the other reason why this Pagani designs an epic fail. That loom is a joke. I mean, I know it's not a dive watch, but to have something that is totally gone within three to four minutes is unacceptable, considering it's something that we value as customers. And what is also unacceptable is they've obviously rushed this watch out. I don't like seeing watches which are cash grabs. They've rushed it out. You failed. They haven't got these little details right, which normally they get right but they need to do better if they're charging more for these pieces. People have a threshold what they're willing to spend. Only about a year ago, you could buy a San Martin with incredible build quality, still are, um, for 150, 160 pounds. You can buy them now still for 165 pounds um, from UK sellers, the Submariner Homage, for example. 
So for not much more, you're going to get a watch with significantly better loom, better fit and finish, screw links, everything, literally everything is better. These Pagani designs need to up their game a bit better because they're very inconsistent at the moment. I think they're trying too hard too quick. They need to take their time, release less watches, but when they do release them, have them spot on. Because people like me, I'm not happy when they do this. But anyway, uh, that's as stern as I get, but I don't need to be sterner than that. I'm, I'm, I've made my point and I hope you have enjoyed listening to it because I've highlighted the pros of this watch and I've been very detailed in the cons. So would I recommend this watch? No. If it's still for you, um, I'm going to put a link in the description, but you know what? I'm not even going to make it an affiliate link because it's a missed opportunity. Callison did a great job at selling and making this watch with minimal flaws. Go and watch my review. I've done it. I'm just not happy that they, uh, Pagani, who can do it, haven't. That's why it's a fail. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, thumbs up. Join the gang if you haven't. We have a fantastic community feel on this channel. And it's so wonderful to be all part of that. And, and it's a joy to share. So if you want to be part of that, subscribe. And I'll look forward to reading your comments on this watch. See you in the next video. Bye for now.